Infantile spasms is a rare and specific type of seizure disorder, also known as West syndrome. IS usually begins within the first year of life. Patients with IS typically have a specific type of seizure called spasms and a chaotic brainwave pattern called hypsarrhythmia. Infantile spasms is a very unique disorder, uh, which was described uh, many years ago. It occurs in young infants, typically, um, and they could be completely normal for a few months. Then all of a sudden, they start having these very characteristic uh, kind of motor movements. Sometimes it's very difficult early on to determine whether spasms and is any different than colic, because they, they may present in a very similar fashion. And there are a few other entities that may mimic spasms at the early outset. It's age-dependent, means that in the vast majority of cases, it occurs within a very narrow window of you know, early development. Most patients with infantile spasms will be diagnosed prior to one year of age. In fact, the peak incidence of spasms is somewhere between three months to seven months of age. The reason that's important for a parent to bring their child through a pediatrician to a, a child neurologist is that quite often what it takes to diagnose seizures, epilepsy, infantile spasm is an EEG and that's typically done at a child neurologist's office. I have seen babies that have this classic flexion of their body or extension of their arms and then they scream and then they go into another one and it looks like their body is having a startle or a spasm but if there's any baby that seems to be doing some type of unusual either dropping of the head or opening the eyes really wide and then there's a five to ten second pause and then they do it again and they have a cluster of some unusual movement that seems to be repeating itself typically upon awakening from a nap. Once infantile spasms is diagnosed, your doctor may run several more tests to try to find out the cause of your child's IS. No matter what the cause is, it's important to find and treat IS as quickly and effectively as possible. One of the most important things we can do is try to identify any underlying causes. And we separate those into two basic categories. One is the symptomatic cause where we can identify something that we know is associated with infantile spasms, and then the cryptogenic category where we can't. It is important to identify spasms early on and to treat as soon as possible. Some parents and caregivers find it helpful to take a video of the child's spasms and record how often they happen in a journal as soon as they begin. Your doctor or nurse may use this information when making the diagnosis and during treatment. If infantile spasms is not properly diagnosed and treated aggressively, uh, the vast majority of patients will actually have a developmental delay and cognitive impairment. Now, of course, uh, if it gets really serious, then, of course, there are other things like motor and kind of sensory disturbances, et cetera. Uh, the neurobehavioral problems that can come uh, on top of the cognitive difficulties only compound the problem. So because spasms involve the entire brain, uh, and we still don't know why it occurs or uh, what the underlying pathophysiology is, but it, we do know that it involves the whole brain and, and that this can therefore affect pretty much every sphere of long-term development and, and, and function. The best chance for response, the best chance for a positive outcome is at the front end, uh, recognizing it early, getting treatment started early, and of course, uh, uh, the fortunate few respond well to treatment and uh, end up stopping the spasms, converting the EEG back to normal, and the children resume their developmental progress.